being live streamed and family and friends can watch that way as well. Mr. Brooks, I'll turn it over to you then. This is your opportunity to address the court. What, if anything, would you like to say, sir? I, I do have a, a lot to say. I would like to stand up, if I may. Go ahead. I apologize for taking so long. Uh, I want to start first. Um, by giving glory to, to God. <laughs> I believe in Jesus Christ. Wholeheartedly. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that He was sent here by the Father to die for all of our sins, everybody. Everybody in this courtroom today, everyone walking this planet, mostly for those of us who will believe. I believe that. He was crucified on the cross at Calvary. And he shed his blood on that cross. And he died. And he was buried. And then he rose again after three days to glory. He took his glorious place at the right hand of the Father. In the Bible it says that he was exalted. Given a name that is above all names, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's not just something that I was taught by my family. It's something I believe in my heart. I just want to clarify one thing. A lot of uh, references was made to one of the things I said regarding my conscience being clear. having the time to think about it last night and to understand um, that the victims have the, the right to feel how they want to feel they have the right to their opinions and understanding that there's a lot of emotion pain Frustration, anger, hatred, a lot of a lot of emotions. But I don't want that comment to be twisted. I don't want that comment to become another narrative that's ran with and taken out of context. That comment was made. Is because I made the decision to rededicate my life to Christ when this tragedy happened. In no way did that comment refer to uh, not having any remorse, not having uh, any understanding.
it was strictly made to that point that I have repented, that I have asked God for forgiveness, that I have sent many prayers up. Learning how to um, wrap my head around this whole situation has been extremely hard. Extremely hard. You get minimal time to uh, reflect in, in a place like this. But one of those minimal times that you get to reflect in a place like this is when you're alone in your cell. When it's just you in the walls. One of the victims made a comment um, about trying to understand why this happened. That's a question I struggle with myself. The why, the how. How could life ever get this far away from what it should be? Regardless of what a lot of people may think about me, about who I am, about my family, about my beliefs, I know who I am. God knows who I am. And I don't have any uh, words of anger, uh, any, any um, shots, so to speak, to throw back. Uh, as I said before, I had to look inside myself and understand why the comments were being made. Why people feel the way they feel and they have the right to. If I may, if I may. Well, you just need to turn forward, sir. I don't know that they're ready for that yet. Respect. I think it's important uh, to state why I did want to turn. Um, comment was made about this mask. It's something that I've worn the whole year of this incident. Um, I don't. Well, I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say don't. But I don't feel like um, I needed to go in too wild. Chose to wear this. Um, there are a lot of different reasons why. Um, but it definitely has nothing to do with hiding anything. Um, there is nothing to hide. When you're on TV every day,
when your life is being dissected for the world to see, when your family's on TV every day in some capacity, um, when you're on pretty much every social media platform, what is there to hide from? I want each and every victim in this incident, family members, those who lost loved ones, those who are still healing. I want you to know that no matter how you felt during this this year, uh, no matter how you felt yesterday. I want everyone to know, also the community of Waukesha, I want you to know that not only am I sorry for what happened, I'm sorry that you could not see <coughs> what's truly in my heart. That you cannot see the remorse that I have. That you cannot listen to all the phone calls that I've made to my family. That you cannot hear all the prayers that I've said in my cell. That you cannot count all the tears that I've dropped in this year. The truth is hard a lot of times. Um, I'm not a very old uh, by age standards, but I've, I've been alive long enough to understand that a lot of people are comfortable with hearing what they want to hear, being told what they wanted, what they want to be told. And being okay with that. It's easy to accept what's on the surface. It's easy to accept what's being put out there. It's harder to pull back the veil. It's harder to look deeper than the surface. And regardless to the truth, I understand that there are many people that would never forgive what happened. I have to be okay with that. And I hold no ill will towards them for that. I have to be okay with the fact that people will be angry, some for a long time, some forever. Uh, I think it was clear um, with respects to how I'm viewed. I will not respond to those comments in anger either. I want to also say that It is not 
me that can take any pain away, um, replace what was lost. give back joy, happiness. There's so many other things that was lost that day. I think all that comes with belief in Christ. I believe that all that comes with time it's a process it's a process that we all have to go through I noticed a lot of things that uh, that I've said over the duration of this trial were um, there's a lot of misconception. I don't consider myself to be a man of God yet. Is something that I'm learning with time, with faith, with study. Lord willing, I will make it to that point at God's appointed time. Something that I'm learning. For anyone that doesn't think that I've spent time in the scriptures even before this, you're mistaken. Passages were quoted from Romans 623 in particular. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. That's Romans six twenty three. It's a verse I'm very familiar with, and I've read numerous times. Um, countless other passages are are all passages that I'm familiar with. The thing about scripture is not only studying and reading it; it's about applying it to your life, applying it. It's not about just reading it or being able to quote it. It's about living it. At times during this, uh, doing all, doing all these proceedings, um, mostly trial. I've become frustrated at times. Um, I want you, Your Honor, to know, I want, I want the entire court to know that regardless to what you may think about those particular incidents, they were not personal. Being here throughout this year and the, the constant um, learning how to deal with everything, learning how to um, Take everything in. Um, 
what you see, what you hear, uh, things being shouted at you, uh, uh, the threats and, you know, everything that you have to deal with just being here. It was like a culmination. Sometimes you get so frustrated because you feel like your hands are tied. You, you don't know what to do. And for a person like me, it's easy for me to get to that point. And so it would come out in frustration. I take responsibility for that and apologize to you, Your Honor, in the court. Nothing about it was personal. It was a part of me that felt that I haven't been able to defend myself. And, and, and I, I think it was just the pot boiling over. I was wrong for not being able to control myself the times that I wasn't me. For long as I can remember. I've dealt with a lot of issues. And going back to what I said a little bit earlier about what people see on the surface. A lot of people don't understand what it is to battle mental health issues. Not just that, but the difficulties of life in general. <coughs> the childhood I had Not having a father, having to see my mom sometimes work two and three jobs just to be able to support us. I remember being a child and me and my sister, my mom only had two children. My sister's passed away but I remember being a child and me and my sister and my mom standing in the welfare line to get milk to get cheese bread spam and when you're a kid you don't understand that you, you think it's normal I remember living in apartment buildings infested with rodents and bugs. Pouring in cereal in your bowl and having bugs in it. A lot of people weren't raised like that. So it would be hard for them to pull back that veil and understand that. Physical abuse.
lot of people that are supposed to love you. Trying to understand why your mind thinks the way it does. Why you don't comprehend certain things. Why no one can provide the answers that you that you want. fact of the matter is I have at times been medicated I have been in, in, in mental health facilities only for a short time I can honestly say that life was better. It helped. I think when you're going through something mentally that you don't understand, it, it always helps when you have people not so much that can relate That also helps, but it's it's more it's not the relating part of it. It's more of the that you can feel comfortable being yourself with someone to listen, someone to to tell you that hey, it, it, it's all right. You can't let your guard down. a lot it's a lot and back to what I said about truth People are going to, like I said, um, believe what they want, and that's okay. But this needs to be said. What happened on November 21st, 2021 was not 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 an attack it was not planned plotted when you constantly hear that Perpetuated, constantly pushed, constantly pushed, constantly pushed. You wonder why, why? This was not an attack.
this was not an intentional act. No matter how many times you say it over and over, it was not. I have a lot of, and this has nothing to do with um, the victims, the families of the victims. And as a matter of fact, I'm grateful that they had the opportunity to voice their opinions and their their frustrations and in their angers because I believe and, and hopefully that that will alleviate some of the wounds. I could I could never point the finger at them and say they're wrong for what they said, their opinions, how they feel. Never. And I won't do it. I won't do it now and I won't do it ever. They're well within their rights. To feel how they feel. I felt a lot of frustration and anger yesterday, not towards any of the victims. It was towards Miss Susan L. Opper. And I won't even throw shots back at her. Again, I choose to take the high road. In spite of the clear language that was used by her. not going to fire back. I'm not going to do that. Am I angry? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> but so what? When it boils down to it, the whole prosecution team had a job to do. Can't be mad at somebody for doing their job. Um, attorney Basie, Attorney Wichow, I, I respect you guys. Regardless of what you may feel about me, I respect you guys. I really do. I respect you too, Attorney Opera. The difference between the all you all you guys is you attorney opera, I don't respect how you did your job. And I never will. But I refuse to get in a name calling. I refuse to raise my voice. I refuse to do any of that. And I realized that last night. 
the part of me that I don't understand why it goes the way it goes. Had every intention to come in here and and, and, and lay into you. Out of frustration and out of the fact of feeling that I needed to defend myself by some of the things you said. How you had the audacity to speak on situations that had nothing to do with this tragedy. As if you were there, as if you had intimate details, as if you knew everything that led up to those allegations. just by reading the police report. I think every situation is unique in its own way. It all has different circumstances that, that leads to ultimately what ends up happening. Reading a police report doesn't give you the right to pass judgment on a situation that, frankly, is none of your concern. Honestly, You would think for someone that's been doing your job as long as you have, you would think you would understand that. You would think that you have some kind of integrity Even with that, not gonna bash, not gonna say anything disrespectful, not gonna call you anything other than your God given name. the integrity though I won't ever be able to wrap my head around um, Why you did things the way you did it <clears throat> made reference to this being an open and shut clay open and shut case yet you needed a whole team to prosecute an open and shut case as you say and again no disrespect to Attorney Basie, Attorney Whitchild. <coughs> I feel like they was the reasons why your case had any strong points, not from you. Thirty-one years 
I've said, well, well, yeah, you did say 31 years that you've, um, you've done this. 31 years. Hmm. I don't believe you're that bright. Yet. I respect you having the resolve to take on something of this magnitude uh, for this community. Can't do nothing but respect that. And regardless, when I leave this courtroom, I will have no ill feelings with anyone. I know this is uh, being um, live streamed. I believe even in other countries. I, I've gotten some mail from Germany, Belgium. Uh, a lot of it hate mail, um, which which doesn't. I stopped reading it months ago, um, so it doesn't really affect me. It's irrelevant. Um, I do want to say something to uh, everybody watching. As as far as. Um, those who take the time spend the energy and money to to write and spew hate not just against uh, myself but my family my children um, I have no value in anything that you say doesn't bother me, doesn't affect me. Keep up the bad work. To everyone else, the um, the people that have sent letters of support, I, I thank you for that because it's not an easy thing to show love and support to someone who's the most hated man on the planet at this point right now in time. It's not easy. It takes a lot of courage to, to, to do that. And I, I, I thank you for that. Um, my family thanks you for that. want to say to the mother of my children <coughs> the mothers excuse me of my children um, obviously I think you I think I should start with the obvious Erica Patterson I want you to know if you're watching, I always have love for you. You're one of the mothers of my children. I can never hate you. I, I refuse to go that route. <clears throat> always have love for you. I always respect you. We, we, we had a beautiful daughter. I haven't always been right in the things that I've said, things I've done in regards to you. 
what I will say is it always takes two. I pray that at some point uh, you will reconcile with your children and that you remember who I am here in my heart. That you remember that. My oldest son, who's who's an adult, his mother, beautiful, beautiful spirit. I thank her for the times that she was <coughs> there to listen when no one else was, when I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on in life, and. I was being pulled to this direction or that direction and just just couldn't figure things out. <clears throat> she would take the time to sit and listen. And I thank her for it. Uh, times where I had nowhere to go, she would find me in the back of a bandit cars or trucks or or something of that nature and, and, and she would do things to help you know you, it's a lot of people a lot of good people out there in the world still <coughs> she's one of them I, I thank you Angel um, that's her name too by the way Angel um, when I was all over the place mentally, couldn't sit still, couldn't make decisions. Trying to figure out um, how life would go being young young parents uh, the both of us she never once judged me she never once ridiculed me and downed me because of my issues she always was willing to be there uh, I'm, I'm eternally grateful for that um, Jessica my youngest daughter's mom I believe it's a reason why God puts anyone in your life at the time that he does. You came into my life at a time where everything was chaotic. I didn't have a clue how to even begin to put one foot in front of the other. You came into my life at a time where I was pondering what did I even have to live for? And in the midst of that, you gave me my daughter, my baby girl. I always get emotional talking about her in particular. Because she's such a daddy's girl. We're very, very close. Very close. I 
felt like uh, when Missy was born. That was God giving me a chance to make good on the mistakes I made with my other older two children at the time. I felt like that was redemption. That everything that I didn't do right before I had the chance to right that wrong. She's probably the single-handed reason why I'm even still breathing. She's such a light, such a light in my life, such a light. She doesn't even understand the extent of everything that's, that's going on. She doesn't know what it is not to be able to talk to me when she wants to. To be able to see me when she wants to. She, she just doesn't get it. And I know that. And I'm mindful that there are people in this community that feel the same exact way. lights in their in their life that were taken so without uh, being insensitive to that I'll move past that I just want to tell my baby girl that I love her. I love you, Missy. My baby boy. I was born in June during the time that I've been here. His mother, Quita. I regret not being able to be there for the times that both of them needed me the most. It's not an easy thing for a, a, a woman to go to through a pregnancy with virtually no help. Having to move uh, residencies uh, because of this tragedy not feeling safe while while she was pregnant not feeling safe receiving threats things like that and i wasn't there
I know what it's like to be at the birth of, uh, of, of your children and to see them born and cut the umbilical cord and to do all those things. I've done that. And to not be able to do it for her and for him. To only know what he looks like because of pictures. For her um, to not feel safe to be in the city or um, be around my family members to to build that rapport because she can't mentally deal with everything that that comes with. for me to not be able to help her, for me to not have any words uh, to uplift her, um, Her expressing her anger to me not knowing how, how everything would go it's hurtful I just I, I want her to know I believe God has a plan for everything and it's about doing the best you can inside of God's will. Say what you want about me. I'm not going to walk away from my children. I refuse to walk away from my children. I love all four of you. And that won't stop for nothing, no matter what. A lot of reference uh, yesterday was made about uh, death. In reference to um, opinions, opinions towards myself, I do not fear death. Not one bit. I do not fear death because I'm in Christ. I 
whether we believe it or not, at some point, we all have a date. Everyone on this planet has a date. In the word it says that it is appointed to man wants to die. The way I see it, it's inevitable, so why fear it? I'm a million percent confident in where I'm going when this is all over. A million percent confident. Regardless of what anyone thinks or says, I'm a million percent confident in where, I, where I'm going. We all got to stand before the judgment seat of Christ at some point. All of us. Nobody's any better than the next person. Contrary to belief, I do not feel like I'm above anyone. I don't feel like I'm superior to anyone. I breathe air, I drink water, I eat, I go to the bathroom, I bleed just like anyone else. I'm no better. I'm a human being, I'm not a monster. I'm a human being that's been trying to figure out for 35 years. Questions that I've never got the answer to. <clears throat> I noticed yesterday in a lot of uh, the victims' statements that a lot of the victims are. Going through the healing process. Believe it or not, I've prayed for all victims, family members for a year now to be able to make it through that process. But it is a process. It, it won't happen overnight. There was a big question of if I was paying attention, if, you know, this, that, or the third, which I won't really get into. I definitely was paying attention. And I heard in a lot of those statements, people that were having their own mental health issues, some recognizing what it was, others not so much, but that's what it was. A lot of things that you just can't quite wrap your head around.
believe it or not. You were talking to someone that's dealt with those same types of questions for a long time. Questioning life itself. Questioning what's the point of being here to go through all this pain, to go through all the doubts, feelings of inadequacy I can relate to firsthand. Being made fun of, being joked about, being jeered at, being bullied. Growing up, I can relate to all of that because I've been through it. Not knowing if you even want to wake up after you go to sleep. I've been through that. Wondering if you'll even be missed when you're gone. The weirdest hours of the morning just sitting up and just finding something to stare at. Hoping that an answer may just fall out of the sky on you. Me, myself, I've, like I said, raised Christian, but it's been so many times through the years that. I've doubted God. It's time. I think everyone in this room can say that. If you believe. You've doubted. You've, you've questioned. You've wondered. Been in situations that just can't figure out why. How 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 do you get how did I get here? What did I miss? What did what 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 didn't I catch? What did not see? What how did it ever get to this? How did it ever end up with this? At some point, we've all, at some point, we've all been in that position. Obviously, in my shoes, it's a little, a little different. I said before, for the people that don't have any understanding, I, I can't sit here and be what people would want me to be. We, we're all individuals. We all... have our own ways of looking at things and uh, we, we, we all have our own uh, personalities or, or, or what not that's what makes us unique is it, it, our individualism 
how one person may react to something, another person may feel the same exact way, but but probably not react the same way. Uh, people can agree on certain things and, and, and still have a different uh, approach. And listening to all the victims yesterday that that you know had the courage to speak and and, and, and state their opinions and, and vent their frustrations and their anger and and, and everything. I heard a lot of. What should have been done, what could have been done, as far as to the the the, rem the remorse. I apologize for not showing people what they wanted to see. I just ask that there be understanding to. That there's a side out of the courtroom that's not seen. What's seen in the courtroom is just a small, a small piece of the whole puzzle. Just, just a fraction. The majority of the time, I'm not standing in the courtroom or sitting in the courtroom. It's not a day, it's not an hour that goes by that I haven't thought about what's happened, that I haven't tried to wrap my head around how, how something like this could happen. Where I haven't thought about the pain that you all are in. What was lost and in the fashion that it was lost. Contrary to what people may think. get to a point though and obviously it's different with me being in this position and people being on the on the other side of, of, of the coin so to speak it's, it's, it's a different position on my end you get to a point where you just you just tired you get to a point where you, you've cried all the tears you can cry you've prayed all the prayers you can pray you, you never stop praying but it's repetitive at this point you get to a point where You're completely drained. You don't know what else you have to give. It was many, many court dates 
in the beginning of all these proceedings that I wasn't even sure if I can even come in the courtroom without breaking down. It was times where I didn't even feel like I was going to make it through a court proceeding. When I did have representation, it was times where I told my representation, no, I, I, I don't. And that wasn't because I just didn't want to come in the courtroom. It was because mentally I could not handle it. I couldn't. Having to be prepped for, 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 for everything that I was going to walk into. Them, them telling me, you know, it's going to be this kind of atmosphere and expect this and expect this. And, and it's just like, wow. <clears throat> How am I going to do this? I, I, I want everyone to know, though, when you walk out of the courtroom and the cameras aren't rolling anymore, You don't have the world looking at you anymore. That's when you can feel like you're human again. When you can go back to your cell, drop your tears, pray, punch your mat if you're frustrated. Sleep it off. Wh whatever you may choose to do. And I wonder how. Things would be different if the cameras was rolling then. When we remove all this. Courtroom. How would, how would it be then? <clears throat> We've all done things in our life that we regret, that we're not proud of. That we don't know what we were thinking. That's been like a roller coaster for me in this year a roller coaster and obviously uh, just everyday life some days are are better than others that's just life in general some days are just better than other days you heard my best friend speak a little bit earlier about I guess it would, would be more happier times but even then put on a smile to hide the pain. <clears throat> long before November 21st, 2021, long before that day,
I was struggling long before. Feeling dead inside. <coughs> then feeling helpful. Then feeling depressed. <coughs> then feeling happy. Then feeling upset. Just up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. <coughs> Ninety percent of the time, not even knowing why you're going from point A to B. Why is it going like this? So I think you do a lot of things to numb that. Some people have different things that help them numb it. Some people turn to drugs, some people turn to alcohol, some people turn to many different things. Some people isolate themselves, some people, however, however you deal with it, it's how you deal with it. At that point in my life, I chose to put up a front. No one seen me for how I truly felt, then it would be no questions. You see someone and they always have an upbeat appearance or seem to be smiling or seem to be in a joyful mood. There's no reason to quit. Like, what, what, what is there a question? How much turmoil could it be? The first thing they would say is every time I see them, they're okay. It's not okay. It's not. But I do believe one thing though. As long as you have breath in your body, no matter what you're going through, where you may be, what struggles you have, um, what you can't figure out, have to find a way to press forward. You have to keep faith and you have you have to press forward. I think uh the apostle Paul said it best. Pastor Paul said it best when he said, uh, one thing I do, forgetting what's behind me and straining toward the upper call of which Christ has taken a hold of him. Straining for which Acknowledging that it's difficult. Acknowledging that there'll be opposition, there'll be hurdles to jump, there'll be mountains to climb. It's not gonna be easy. Acknowledging that by saying straining. Straining to move forward.
that's what I've been learning. Is it frustrating that sometimes people mistake that for not caring? Yeah. It's very frustrating. As hard as it is, you cannot turn back the hands of time. You can't. As much as I wish I had the power to do that, I can't. <coughs> so I have to look at life going forward not backward I have to look at reality I've moved past the actual tragedy of the day of November 21st, 2021, but I have not moved past uplifting this community in prayer. And I will continue to do that until it's my time to pass on. I won't stop uplifting the communities in prayer, the victims, the families. Regardless of how anyone feels, I will continue to pray for him because that's what I want my heart to reflect. And I don't want I don't want it to be uh, misinterpreted what I'm saying by that, by saying I've moved past the actual day to clarify that. So there's no misconception is that none of us can go back and change what happened we can't but that doesn't mean that My life has to continue to be defined by that. I refuse to continue to live at that time because that time is past. We can always say shoulda, coulda, woulda. Nobody knows what they'll do until they're in that situation. It, it, it's easy to say, I would have did this. I could have did this. I should have did this. I would have did that. I you never know what you're going to do until you actually there. Does anyone think I haven't asked myself that? Man, I should have. I did not. Go to, what, what, what does it matter now? How many times can I pound my fist against something and say, why, how, how could this, what, what? <gasps> how many times before you just like, you have to move forward. Forgiveness. Matthew six, fourteen and fifteen, forgiveness.
For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. That's Jesus himself, God himself. I point no fingers towards anyone in judgment to say, how could you say this and how, like I said before, how people process this tragedy is, is how they choose to. I could jump up and down and yell and scream about what was said in regards to me, but why? Everyone has to make their own peace with God, and that's what I've done, regardless to what people think I've done it. I don't want that to be confused with being at peace. It's a process, but I've made my peace. That is the only reason why I made the comment that I have a clear conscience. It was not pertaining to remorse. It wasn't uh, mockery. It wasn't, it wasn't to thumb my nose at anyone. That wasn't what that comment was about. I've chosen to do that because it was needed. It's easy to lose your way in a world because the, the world is, as we all know, it's, it's a big place. All types of things are out there. All types of it's easy to get caught up in, in, in the world. I can't and I refuse to live the rest of my life trying to please other people. I still have a long way to go to get to where I need to be. But my life now is about pleasing God. It's about what he wants, not what I want. It's about what he wants, not what everybody else wants. I brought up God's will. Yet another comment that was taken out of context. A comment that again was not meant in a disrespectful manner in any way. 
was not meant to thumb my nose at anyone in any way. It was the acknowledgement that God is in control of everything. Everything. The good, the bad, and the ugly. He is in control. That's what that was pointed towards. That and that alone. For those of us who do believe, we always been taught that God, his way is not ours. <coughs> What he sees fit to do, we can't stand in the way of it. No matter how much we wish we could, we can't. Frankly, sometimes that sucks. I never thought I would be standing here not being able to enjoy a time with my family that anyone would enjoy with their family. People lost loved ones. I'm sure they feel the same way. They never expected to be here now because of something like this. That is not lost on me. <clears throat> to suggest that I don't care. Out of everything that's been said during this whole year, that's probably the hardest one. To digest. <clears throat> to suggest that I'm heartless. should do as far as the sentences are concerned with all of these convictions honestly your honor And I don't want I don't want this to be taken out of context. I believe There's issues with me attempting to answer that. And here's why. I'm still confused. I'm still confused on the true nature and cause of the charges. I don't understand them. I also
I also believe a decision was already made before we even got here. And I could be wrong. That That's not a shot. It's not a slight in any way towards your honor. It, it's not. And I don't, I don't want that to be taken out of context as, as well. I, I will say I will say help is needed. When you've dealt with certain things as long as as I have, we have so many questions about where to start. Where to start? We have so many questions about. What can give you the help you need? Who can point you in the direction to get the help you need? There, there's so many things that you, you you just you don't know where to start at. Your Honor. I think that throughout these um, uh, proceedings, um, and I've noticed this, that, that you've been very observant. Um, you've, you've been um, very attentive. Regardless of me being uh, frustrated with some of the things that has has been, I, I can't do anything but um, look at what what you have what you have done, which is. You have, you, you have um, been very, very keen. Um, I believe that um, still a lot of issues there. I believe that because of the issues I have sometimes you I may have said things that you probably didn't really understand what I was meaning by it uh, I'm not uh, sharp as knife in the drawer um, I think sometimes um, my, my my mind probably works a little faster than I can articulate something or pronounce something or say something. Um, obviously, it would be um, hard to top what was already said said about you thus far. You've gotten a, a, a incredible amount, a, a cre, cre, a credible amount of uh, of love um, for your job in this in this in this matter. Um, some even say superhero. Um, 
some people, I'm sure you know this, but uh, some people have even dressed up as you for Halloween. Mr. Brooks, I'm not looking for accolades from anyone. I'm looking here today to sentence you in this case, and I'm frankly more interested in your thoughts on that than your opinion of me and how I conducted myself during this trial. Uh, was it my opinion on that part? I, I just... I have a job to do today. It's not an easy one. There are 76 counts. <coughs> I'd like you, if you can and if you want, to tell me how you think I should do that. That's what the victims have stated. That's what the state, right? They provided their recommendation. The only thing I can say <coughs> is one thing that should be taken into account is the time that I've served. Been here a year. Um, that would pretty much negate count 76. So there's that. Um, Your Honor, I'm I'm confused. I don't I don't understand the true nature and cause of the charges. So I can't I, I don't I can't really consent to being sentenced when I'm still trying to I don't have I don't understand it's not a delay tactic it's not attempting to be disruptive um, it's not intended to stop the proceedings it's my honest opinion I, I have trouble um, <clears throat> with comprehension. I, I can say uh, with one million percent certainty. that everything um, as far as um, in regards to me, everything should be looked at in, 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 in its um, totality. Um, the mental health issues I believe that you've seen you've seen them rear their head at times I believe that I, I know that you've seen that rear his head at times I also believe that You recognize the need for, for, the, for the help that's needed. You've um, you've seen things as far back as uh, my childhood, and I believe that you understand the. Uh, certain needs that would benefit <clears throat> where to start me myself I don't know there's so many issues that
I've been trying to address for a long time. <coughs> a very long time. And I don't know where to start. I have no idea. Um, I can tell you that I want to be able to get to a point in my life where I can have the ability to recognize before um, before it happens when something could become out of control um, before um, <clears throat> outside uh, source can maybe pinpoint it and say maybe something's wrong I, I would want to get to a point where I can be able to recognize the signs on my own um, I want to get to a point where I don't have a, a, a mind that's jumping back and forth and all over the place and these moves they go from here to here to here to here to here to here to here and then it's like oh I'm cool and then it's here to here to here to here I want to get to a place where I can combat that it's this your honor this this has not been easy and, and not just this but, but life in general it has not been easy <clears throat> It's, it's not easy to wake up every day and try to figure out how to, how to stay grounded or how to stay in a stay in a um, um, I don't want to say a box but to be able to to stay in, 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 in a straight line, to be able to take life as it comes, to, to um, not only be able to cope with things, is, is, things are gonna happen, problems happen. Um, life itself isn't easy. I wanna get to a point, Your Honor, where I can Be able to say, okay, it's okay. It's okay. I can be myself. I can say, you know what? You aren't the only person going through this. This doesn't make you um, any less than anybody else. I wasn't asked to be born this way, Your Honor. I, I wasn't. I was not. I don't understand it. But the fact of the matter is, is, is I want to get to a point of happiness again to be able to be uh, medicated and not care what people think to be able to speak my truth without having to feel ashamed that some people may think of me lesser than a person because I have to be medicated for life for it because um, they feel like it's not normal <clears throat> Which lends to the reason why I said not wanting to live to please anyone else anymore. But for me to be okay. Here. Here. For me to be okay. Because I haven't been for a long time. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired, Your Honor. I'm tired. Some days I don't know what, what's up or down. 
some days. I, I don't know. I want to know. Mr. Brooks, it's going on two hours. <coughs> I feel like we're starting to cover the same ground over and over. So I'm going to ask you again, because I'm really interested in your perspective. I want to know as I consider and contemplate and finalize what to do in this case if there are any sentencing recommendations you have on your own behalf to make at this time. I just want to be helped. I don't. I don't want to live with with inside this pain anymore. I I, I know that's probably not the answer you're looking for. Six of these counts that you have been convicted of are intentional homicide charges. The options for the court are very limited. Life without the possibility of extended supervision. Life with the possibility of extended supervision as early as 20 years, that's the statute. And third, anything in between. And then lastly, related to that, there's an enhancer of five years for each count based upon the jury answering that special verdict question, did you commit the offense of intentional homicide by using a dangerous weapon? Thoughts on that? Uh, I don't. Do you think you should spend the rest of your life in prison without ever seeing freedom outside bars. That would be extended supervision. Should these counts run consecutive or concurrent? Meaning one after the other or serving them at the same time? What are your thoughts on those things? Um, I didn't understand everything you said, but I did. Um, can't live a million years. I understand so, that. So. I feel like. Um, I should be able to go somewhere. Where. I can be helped where I can be properly evaluated, where I can be properly medicated. <clears throat> if that is an extended period of a long, long time, at least I know that I'm getting what I need. Not, not what I want, what I need. At least then, I would be able to say, it's okay. You can be you. You can. Be grateful for the fact that. You have 
experts, or I, I don't know if that's the right word, but um, you you have people that know exactly what to do, that recognize exactly what needs to be done and what should be done. To be able to um, like I said be properly uh, medicated which is extremely needed. I, I don't know if that answers I'll follow it up again do I what I hear you saying sir is that you don't have a specific recommendation in terms of how long the sentences are whether they're life whether they're consecutive whether they're concurrent but you're asking me to take into consideration your mental health needs and your desire to get help would that be fair yes All I right. would say um, and uh, I think it should be um, what you said. Um, what, what was the term you used? Um, the extended supervision term, or consecutive versus concurrent? Yeah. The concurrent. Right. Serving sentences at the same time versus consecutive, one after the other. Um, serving all together. My main thing is, you know, like I said, re re regardless is to not just be put placed somewhere and just forgotten about. That doesn't help. Obviously, I don't know um, how that all works. Um, but um, I know that it would greatly benefit me to be able to be somewhere where like I said, I can properly um, evaluate it and medicate it with the things that I need. It, it could be something that I haven't even discovered yet, or not me myself, but it could be something that maybe way near that could have helped me years ago that I probably wouldn't never have known up until this point that could have immensely help I, I, I want the saying, yeah I want the, the opportunity and again, to, I think we're starting to right repeat yeah. some of these topics that you've covered and I understand what you're saying I and I beat this I want to beat this I want I the opportunity that. to beat it to show that it can be beat at this I don't, time I don't have to live like you know I, I want to show I want to show that regardless of, 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 of anything that there is still hope. I want to be able to show my children that regardless you 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 can be you can you can rise up. You don't have to you don't. I, I believe I, I understand and comprehend your desire to have your mental health issues addressed and met you've stated that multiple times I understand that I can certainly address that in my sentencing remarks here today at this time um, it's been over two hours I appreciate all of the 
words you've said here today and the fact that you've um, you know made a statement it um, I apologize for the length I didn't even it's not about realize it's okay but at this time I would like to take about a just shy of 20 minute break come back at 3 p.m. and start my portion of the sentencing hearing with my sentencing remarks and the sentence so at this time um, we will be in recess until 3 p.m. Thank you, everyone.